All right, Winston Peters joins us now by phone. Sorry about that, Winston. I'm going to say it was our fault rather than blame my guest. All right, but we have you with us now. Um, how was the weekend in Christchurch? Well, I think it went very, very well because it's midterm of the year after the election, before the next one, and uh, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of drive, and seriously, a lot of commitment and motivation, and that's what's important. Mm. Gosh, you've been here before. Um, you've been around for so, so long. Um, but I would have to say the knowledgeable political commentators I talk to say this is probably the steepest and tallest hill you've got to climb electorally um, in your life. No, we were caught in 2011 in a similar situation. The difference is that we made it back easily in 2011, but we are, we are possibly a whole nine to 12 months ahead in our planning and our progress than we were back then. So this is going to be possible. And I, and I think in the end, the numbers that turned up for the meeting on uh, Sunday afternoon tells us that. All right. What numbers turned up for the meeting? We put out 404 seats and there was standing room only at the back of the hall. Okay. So you right. maybe got 500 people. I, didn't, I don't know if it's 500, but we came very close to it. All right, that's still a long way. 500 to, to what do you need? 5% of the vote, you need 140,000 votes in New Zealand to get over the line of 5%. There's still a long way to go, isn't there? Well, no, if you look at... Uh, I never use polls, you know that. But if you look at UMR, we're only about 15,000 away from going over the 5% mark, and we think we're past that now anyway. But that's not our intention to scrap back then. We're going to go for broken and sure that the people of this country have got a chance to change some of these malignant, hopeless, dangerous policies. OK, so that means getting rid of Labor, doesn't it? Well, it means getting rid of those people in Parliament who support racism, who support the seeds of apartheid, and that's what they are. It's just uh, worse than that. What they're really saying, of course, in their paternalistic, inverse, racist way is, Maori can't perform unless we give them a leg up. You can't make it to the top unless we help you. And boy, if you are a serious Maori or anybody from any ethnic group, that's the kind of treatment you cannot stand. And I'm out there making sure that enough Maori understand that they're being taken for a ride. And when you look at the serious things that Maori want, they do nothing about that. But this head down the road with Willie Jackson and, dare I say, and others, sort of um, <laughs> a reconfiguration, rewriting the treaty, rewriting the laws, bus. And that's a journey we cannot, as a country, afford. All right, so you've mentioned Willie Jackson. Does that mean you would not be part of any government or coalesce with a government that had Willie Jackson in Cabinet? I made it very clear in my work with speech about two, uh, mm -hmm. uh, two months ago that if those parties in Parliament are intent on pursuing with racism, we would not be having anything to do with them. Yeah, that's so, very, so very my clear. question was, Winston, would you Are rule you out... Your question really asked this way. If they have a Damascus, a Damascus experience and reject the stupidity that they're engaged in now, then there is a possibility that on the present basis and on their current arrogance, they, uh, the Labour Party is gone. And worse than that, I don't think they're going to make it to the next election because their policies are so divisive, they'll start dividing the party itself. Yeah, well, that's the other question I want to ask. You've made some prediction of a snap election... How do you see that unfolding or happening? What would, when you've got a government that's ruling by majority in an MMP system, how do you come up with an excuse to have a snap election, Winston? That's a brilliant question. And uh, I'd like them to give an answer, but that will be on their mind. Remember, it's 2002, and Helen Clark did exactly that. She called it a snap election. What out of the field? Prepare to see one again. All right, so you're saying they are looking to go as early as possible. Is that because the tide, do you think, is going to continue going out for Labor and the Greens? Yes, yeah. exactly. Mm. Look, the other interesting thing over the weekend, I think David Seymour came out and said a vote for Winston or New Zealand First is a wasted vote. It is pretty clear that ACT and New Zealand First, in um, a number of instances, you are hunting, chasing, trying to appeal to the same constituency, to the same voters. Do you, in real terms, see ACT 
as the party that you have to best to get back into Parliament? Well, I don't understand why he would be attacking uh, New Zealand first or attacking me. I mean, how does this help the people of this country? And that's the real point to know with respect to uh, David Seymour. In all the money and all the time that Act has been in Parliament, about as long as New Zealand First, they've never, ever got a minister inside the Cabinet. This is astonishing stuff. So I'd say, David, stop wasting your time. I know you're nervous, but stop looking at the wrong enemy here and try to get yourself refocused. Uh, because in the end of the day, what the people want is a thing called authenticity. Mm. And your behaviour doesn't fit that bill. You have been, you've done really well at getting um, New Zealand First MPs into Cabinet, Winston. Yourself in particular, you've also done really well at getting Jacinda Ardern into the ninth floor of the Beehive. No, I didn't. In 2020, the people of this country, 400,000 of them shipped their boat and put her in the Beehive by herself. We all know that. So let's move on. No, 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 let's future. not move on, Winston, because I still look at the text. Well, look, the, the te is... I'm looking at the texts that are coming in, and boy, you have still got to convince people to forgive you for that. Yeah, well, I'll do that easier if, it's, if you keep on not answering, asking the same question every time I come on your program. <laughs> you know what I've said to you. In 2020, the people of this country, and many of your listeners decided that Labour Party would have a, a majority all by themselves. No, they didn't. More of them nothing, voted for National nothing, than anyone else. Look, nothing to do with New Zealand First in 2020. You know that. So let's move on. We've got to change this country and, you know... Rolling over old coals would not help us. All okay, right? all right. Would a, a government with I New Zealand know, first in it, would it fund Shakespeare? Would it fund Shakespeare That's in what? schools? Well, of course it, we will, because I cannot believe this is the kind of woke stupidity overcoming this country. I mentioned it on my speech on the weekend. This has got to stop. Fancy of all things, Shakespeare, respected by the Russians, the Chinese, all the Europeans, and every other country in the world, is not respected in by any human by our educational system. But the people who come to these decisions should be fired. Yeah, well, we are gonna, go. you, we're going to find right. out this morning who made the decision uh, this morning. We've also got this morning on the front page of the Dominion Post in Wellington um, a report that's been leaked to their education reporter on Tipu Kanga, which is the uh, amalgamation of polytechnics, um, where a whole bunch of people say, oh, it's not Māori enough or it's not inclusive enough and there should be a co-governance model for polytechnics. Yeah. Is that the sort of stuff you're going to stop? Uh, I've set out and made it very clear in a number of speeches, including the one yesterday, that we're going to stop this work, this visit nonsense. You've got all sorts of people without any authority whatsoever ramming the scepters, the seeds of apartheid down our throat. They need to be stopped in their tracks. Mm. Uh, I must go. Sorry about that. I, okay, um, I've got you. I know you're busy, and I thank you for your time. Sorry about the technical mess up. We'll try and figure out yeah. what happened. That is uh, Winston okay. Peters, the leader of the New Zealand First Party. Um, oh, yeah, so look, it's not, not 2017. Forget 2017 when he put uh, Jacinda Ardern in, 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 into the beehive. Forget that. Just let's not talk about that, says Winston, and he wishes I'd stop asking him about it. Um, but, man, he is going to fight, and I see he and David Seymour uh, fighting for the same votes against the wokeness, against the wokeness.